guess who's back in the house? I hope that you guys are having a lovely day. I just finished the sixth episode of AJ and the Queen. And I think I say this like every single episode, but six is probably my favorite of all of the other episodes. My camera looks really weird right now. It looks really blurry. I don't know why this looks so super blurry. Let's see. Oh, better. Now I don't look like really hazy. Um, so <laughs> rewind. Um, episode six, AJ and the Queen. And good morning, Raheem. Thanks for watching. Um, so this is by far my favorite episode thus far. It's titled Little Rock, uh, which is in Arkansas. And the themes of this episode are celebrating yourself or knowing who you are, even if that is too much and still being true to yourself. And also in that same vein, being authentic, not only to yourself, uh, but to the people around you. And that is something so important for LGBT youth to hear. And I'm, I'm, I'm good, Raheem, thanks for asking. Um, I hope that you're having a great day. And so Ruby and AJ are driving to Little Rock into an RV park. And at the RV park, AJ learns that there's a diamond field and that Arkansas has, um, there are more diamonds mined in all Arkansas than any other state in the country. And so AJ is obsessed with finding a diamond. And so later on in the episode, we learn that AJ wants to find a diamond in order to receive money from it um, at a various kind of like diamond shop in order to give to her grandfather so that he can keep her. And so that's a really heartbreaking moment because you would think that the grandfather would just care for her and want her as she is. And so Ruby tells her, you don't need to find diamond because you are a diamond and that is such a tender moment between them earlier in the episode we discovered that within five months of them dating um ruby and damien uh two months before their breakup because they dated for seven months ruby tells damien that he wants to adopt children with him and AJ is now his adopted daughter. Um, and even though kind of like by default, he has become her adoptive parent because he's caring for her while on the road. But you really see that in the moment between them. They're in the dark in this, in this diamond field and it's very symbolic and it didn't feel forced it felt very natural um it's one of the most memorable scenes during this particular episode and i loved it and we see this kind of like playing out throughout the episode so ruby is asked by Three, rim, three women in the RV park if uh, Ruby can help them with an annual event that they have where these three women sing one song from Greece. And they know that Ruby is a performer because one of their husbands um, ran Ruby's um, plates and discovered uh, who Ruby was. And so during the rehearsal, they realized that Ruby is team too much and that is 
making a lot of demands of them and it's no longer fun and they're afraid that Ruby will outshine them. And so um, they fire Ruby. And so Ruby calls Luis and asks Luis like, hey, um, do you think I'm too much? And Luis says, yes, but that's why I love you. And anyone who doesn't love you as you are, it is their problem, their issue. You know who you are and you don't have to be in the same space with them. And so I love that. Uh, Ruby remembers that because she is too much, um, she has become Ruby Red. She has been able to express herself uh, how she wants to express herself through her own vision. And that has brought her joy in life through drag and female illusion. And Ruby Red has given her confidence to live as Robert. And so that is a powerful message to receive. And there are millions of LGBTQ youth in this world who need to hear that at a young age that you can live the life that you want to live. You can dress how you want to dress. Um, you can present yourself how you feel comfortable presenting yourself and that's okay. Like there are so many older people in the community that if they heard that at a younger age, they wouldn't hate themselves. They wouldn't harm themselves. They wouldn't self-medicate. They probably wouldn't get involved in drugs heavily. And so this is such a powerful show for younger people to see and to really reflect upon and realize that, you know, I can live a really good life and be the person that I want to be. And so um, I, I love that. Um, so later on in the episode, um, Ruby has been fired from uh, the event, the production of Grease. And Ruby is dressing up Brick, who is um, a boy the same age as AJ. And he has very um, strict parents. And so he dresses up Brick as John Travolta's character from Greece and AJ as Sandy, who is Olivia Newton-John. And so he, he dresses them up as their characters and he wants them to steal the spotlight from these three women who have fired him from the production of Greece. And so at the last minute, Brick says, AJ, switch costumes with me. I'll be Sandy and you can be John Travolta. And so they go on stage, they perform. Brick's wig falls off and the father sees that's his son. He stops the production and drags his son off stage. Ruby goes to their trailer, uh, which their trailer looks exactly like my stream was interrupted for some reason. That's so weird. Uh, but it looks like I'm back. Um, that's never happened before. That's so weird. Um, so as I was saying before, um, Ruby goes to the trailer to talk to the father and basically tells the father that, you know, in this moment, you can deny your son this moment to dress as Sandy, but you're only harming him. You're not helping him, even though you think you might be helping, but you're doing more damage. And so um, the father is actually convinced that, hey, like 
this might be something that will help my son, him dressing in women's clothing. But right now he's not leaving this trailer and letting the people in the park see him dress this way. The son pulls a shotgun out and says, I'm wearing this dress, which is hilarious. Um, and it's also a little bit commentary on guns in the household, how your gun can be used to potentially harm you. Um, so that was really interesting. Um, and so um, Ruby then appears as Bad Sandy for the big song. I don't know the name of it, but it's like, um, maybe it, um, you better shape up, uh, 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 cause I need a friend. Whatever that song is, they performed that song. I actually performed that song in high school for a fashion show for a department store um, for a back to school mm -hmm. sale, which is hilarious. Um, it's, we practice, it was a, um, the models, uh, we practice for about two weeks before the fashion show. And um, it was really cool that that song we performed and it was stuck in my head that I would sing it and people would ask me like, how do you know this song? Like, that's so random. Um, and I knew that we would have a Grease or Olivia Newton-John moment because RuPaul has really inserted all of his loves um, and messages into this season of AJ and the Queen. Like Diana Ross, he can quote lines from Greece, Xanadu, um, music from Olivia Newton-John, and Olivia Newton-John has appeared on Drag Race as a guest. Um, and so, and it was actually a really cute performance um, with Ruby and AJ. And there's also a gay cowboy couple in this particular episode, uh, which I really like because people think that um, gay people are a monolith, that they're all the same, uh, that we're a walking orgy. Um, we um, think the same thoughts. Um, my mother once accused me of hating women, um, which is the reason why I was gay. And it's so silly because like, I don't know a single gay man that hates women. Like we worship women, we worship divas. Um, and so I think it's important for the mainstream to see that there are different types of gay people. And the hilarious thing is that um, th these gay cowboys, one of them shoots a rattlesnake off of Ruby's, um, what is it? Some, um, oh my gosh, it's a particular robe that she's wearing, but there's a name for it, but I can't think of it. Um, and that was such a butch gay cowboy moment. Um, side note, I would love to have a cowboy as a husband. Any gay cowboys, DM me. <laughs> um, so overall, I give this episode an A. Um, the script was well written. The acting felt very natural. Everyone has really settled into their their characters at this point. And in the beginning, Lady Danger and Damien, they're trying to um, run Ruby off of the trail that she's on to get into the RV park. And so um, they're really trying to do her harm. And so they decide that they actually put a rattlesnake in her trailer to kill her. The rattlesnake doesn't kill her. And so then they decide to track her trailer. And so they do this cute thing. They find the tracking device on underneath the uh, trailer. 
and then they put it on Brick's family's trailer and they have them go in one direction out of the park and they go in the opposite direction because their trailers actually look alike. Um, so that was a great moment as well. Lady Danger, Tia Carrera, and Damien, I forget his name. Um, but I'm really loving them more as characters. And we get a, a small scene with Lewis, AKA Miss Cocoa Butter in drag. And I just love her on camera. Uh, she nails it every single time, even with as little dialogue as possible. And so overall, this is a great episode. Um, someone told me that Mississippi is like the best episode of the season. I, um, I think it's either seven or eight because there are only 10 episodes in this season. So I'm excited to watch that episode. And I think this is the first episode where we see Ruby in a blonde wig. Every other wig has been red. And so, but it was cool because she's playing a, she's playing an iconic character who has blonde hair. So she had to wear blonde hair. And so, but I love that um, Ruby's signature is a red wig. So love that moment. Um, this is the um, an episode where we don't have a cameo by a drag queen. And so that's really interesting. Um, so I'm sure we, because it's been two episodes back to back where we haven't had any cameos from drag race contestants. And... Altogether, 22 Drag Race alumni appear in this particular project. And in some of the clubs, there are photographs of queens who don't appear in the actual series, like Tempest Du Jour. She appears in a photo in the background in one of the clubs. And another tidbit is that um, the blonde uh, woman in the pink lady. She actually was in a project with Michael Patrick King, who he's the co-creator of this project. They had a project called, I think, Love You More that was developed for Amazon. However, Amazon didn't pick it up, but this is the first time that they've worked together since that project. So just a, a cool um, factoid for you guys. So I've reached the end of this review. I am curious your thoughts. Who do you think shined in this particular episode? Um, how does this episode uh, fare out um, with the other episodes um, in the series? Um, who is your favorite, um, who had your favorite scene in this particular episode? So just let me know your thoughts in the comment section and please like and share this video and support this channel. And um, I've reached 48 subscribers. So thank you to all my new subscribers. I really appreciate your support. It really means a lot to me. I'm always growing this channel and um, I feel that we grow together. Uh, because I like to give a lot of facts behind my videos. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I wouldn't do this without you all. So thanks. I really appreciate it. Um, and please remember to love yourself, to love your chosen family and uh, the family that you were given. Um, and be good to everyone in the community. And until next time, besos. Mwah.